right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna tie up what is basically a fancy cone head woolly bugger um, and a couple of my favorite colorways for this time of year. Um, streamer fishing out here has been really hot. We're starting with the TMC 5262 in a size 4. Got a little large, a um, little large, a large brass cone head here in copper. And I'm just going to get a nice little thread coat all the way down the shank here. We're using a uni thread in 6.0 and the color is rusty brown. This first one that we're going to tie up is kind of like a, I guess I call it like pumpkin spice. Um, I'm going to start off here with, I'm going to take a piece of kind of crappy marabou and I'm just going to peel some off. The tail here is going to be orange, which is where the pumpkin part of the pumpkin spice comes in. So I'm just kind of peeling this back, getting about, I don't know, maybe like two inches worth of the marabou plume. That's kind of subjective though, because all these are going to have kind of different densities, but you can kind of see the amount that I'm working with there is, it's a pretty decent amount. We want the tail to be about the length of the hook shank. I'm going to do a pinch wrap here, pull up, and one more time, Let's see that that looks good, awesome, and I'm going to do a couple loose wraps here, just working my way up to secure all of that down, this is looking good, I'm going to work down a little bit farther here, I want to basically end the thread at about the barb of the hook. Next, we're going to add some flash to the tail. I'm going to take three strands of 1 100th micro flash and let's go ahead and clip those out. And just kind of take it in the middle here, work the thread back up a little ways. There's a lot of different ways to do this. It really doesn't matter how you secure this flash here because this is all going to end up covered in dubbing anyways. But I like to do it, this set tends to be the easiest, where I just wrap it around the thread, secure it to the top, give it a couple more wraps backwards, and then I'll split it so that you get three strands on either side. And then you hold it down and you just advance the thread backwards. This, if you're doing like a bunch of these in different colors and stuff, this is by far the most efficient way to do this. Next, I'm going to take a length of, uh, this is amber colored copper wire. You can use copper, you can use gold, you can use whatever you want. And I'm just going to secure this to the near side of the shank with a, three or four wraps forwards and then just go right back to where you ended the thread, or ended the tail rather. Next, I'm going to take some Senyo's Fusion Dub in Crusty Nail. I freaking love this stuff. Use it all the time. I think this color, Crusty Nail, and then Flame are my two favorite Fusion Dub colors. So I'm just going to start this up here. It doesn't have to be a super thick body. Just working my way forwards building a little bit of a taper, but the taper is not super crucial because there's just a bunch of crap on this fly. <clears throat> so I've definitely been digging the trout spay game out here. Moved from Oregon to Colorado for graduate school this July, and definitely missing the steelhead and salmon this time of year, but man, the trout fishing out here is a lot of fun. Um, not a whole lot of streamer fishing opportunities in the Eugene, Oregon area, or at least not a whole lot of predatory fish, very few brown trout, our side of the Cascade Pass. Um, so fall isn't really the time to hammer them on streamers. All right, almost done here. I do like to load up a little bit of dubbing here, right? behind the cone just to seat it. I didn't use any lead wire in this. Um, I've been fishing this fly a lot just on the swing with the trout space stick. Um, I also 
had a pretty hot day of fishing on a, a lake nearby and I used this in olive and peacock. Um, literally this exact same pattern, just in olive and peacock. Underneath a bobber and it worked great, just kind of like a leech. Um, again, this is really just a fancy woolly bugger. So next thing I'm gonna do here, I started to secure that wrong just out of habit, but I'm gonna start here at the back right before it gets webby and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a part there. I'm gonna go thick stem away from me and I'm gonna do a figure eight wrap to secure it. So right over that crease, come back around, right over the crease again, nice and tight all the way through, one more, and then right back through the center of that figure eight again. This just helps so that when I'm wrapping this backwards, starting at the thick section, it helps it kinda wrap perpendicular from the hook shank. All right, I'm gonna go, oopsie. And here we go, a learning moment. I did this with the concave side towards the eye of the hook, and it really should be done with the concave side backwards like this. So, mistakes happen. Good learning opportunity, because I didn't even mention that when I was tying it in. All right, so here we'll do it again. Figure eight, bring it back around behind, back in front, through again, and then last time through for that figure eight. And then a couple nice tight securing wraps back over itself at the front, snip off the excess butt there, and we'll go a couple wraps just here until you start to see the fibers become a little pointier. And I know that's really kind of vague, but I'm using a neck hackle here instead of a standard hackle because I just like it to be big, flowy, webby fibers that are going through the body here just get a little bit more movement. The only concern I would have with this is that it might like foul up and hook or something like that, but I haven't had any issues with that, with those longer fibers. All right, now I'm gonna take my copper wire here and I'm gonna wrap it counter ribbing the hackle that I just worked through backwards. Now I'm going back forwards and this just to help lock everything in so when a fish's teeth touches the hackle, it doesn't just undo all this work and unravel the fly. But, you know, I've kind of found like, this has been said many times, this is not novel, I'm not like inventing this, but the more beat to crap your fly is, the more fish eat it, the more it starts to fall apart, the more they like it. Must be buggier. All right, there we go. Um, I didn't mention this as we are going through the tail here, but I'm going to snip off the tip of the hackle here, and then I'm also going to trim off the flashaboo to be flush with the ends of the marabou tail. So there we go. You could really just whip finish this now, and it would be very, very fishy. Fish would eat it like crazy, um, but we're going to go a couple steps further, and I'm actually going to pause this because I forgot one material. And we're back. We've got some barred and speckled crazy legs in pumpkin. I'm only gonna take one leg here and I'm just gonna fold it in half, take my scissors, cut them in half, and I'm gonna take each of those halves and do that same attachment method that I did with the micro flashaboo. I'm gonna fold it around the thread like this. I'm gonna do one of these legs on the near side and I'm gonna wrap it backwards and then again, but on the far side, here, on the far side, and then again, whoops, need to get that a little bit more room towards the front, good, and then wrap it backwards. So now we've got those locked in nice and tight and they're pushed backwards towards the butt of the fly. All right, we've got two more things to do here. One, we're gonna take a pretty sparse pinch of that crusty nail dubbing. That's actually a little too much. Again, really sparse, like 
very, very little of it, just kind of as a, a veil over the front of the fly here. And I'm going to spin it in a dubbing loop, and then we're going to add one little hack over the front there. So I'm just going to do a little dubbing loop here with my finger. Wrap it around. Awesome. Take my loon dub and spinner. Take that, again, really, really sparse piece of this crusty nail dubbing. You can probably hardly even see that on camera. Oh, we might have gone a little out of focus here. All right. Spin it up. Awesome. And this, again, really, I've got a a lot of confidence in a woolly bugger. Um, we'll do some more streamers in a time series later on that are a little bit bigger, a little meatier, but man, you really just can't go wrong with a good assortment of woolly bugger type flies in your fly box. It's just good, clean fun. All right, there we go. You can see that kind of just adds a little bit of extra flash, body, shoulder to the front of the fly, whatever you want to call it. I'm just securing this dubbing loop nice and tight down to the front here. It helps to build up a little bit of bulk in the front of this fly too because it kind of builds up the profile maybe of a sculpin. It also helps to keep the uh, cone head secure. So next I've got a really, really big piece of uh, an India hen hackle. This one's in Prince Nymph Brown. This is a really big feather from kind of the back of that patch. So what I'm doing here is I'm tying it in by the tip. I'm going to snip it out. And I'm going to really load this up here at the front. Just sweeping these fibers back as I go with my fingers. These kind of just jam into the cone here as I'm working my way in. And I'm basically just going to go until the fibers start to turn kind of webby like they are there. Wrap a couple times through here, loose, and then tight down. Not super tight, don't want to pop my thread, that'd be a crappy time to do that. And maybe just one more time through there. And there we go. Take the tips of my scissors and snip out the butt of that feather. All right, that's looking pretty fishy. I'm gonna just barely trim these rubber legs to be a little bit past the hook bend. Alright, and you can whip finish this into the cone. What I like to do is take some super glue and just kind of coat that thread with it. And then I'll take my off hand sweep those fibers back so they're nice and out of the way and just get you know a good 10 12 wraps in there and then maybe a half hitch and we'll call it good all right scissors there we go all right that's fly number one in the series this one's in that pumpkin spice colorway really really dig these um, next one up will be white and gold Alright, on to the second fly in the fancy Wooly Bugger series. This one, still tied on a size 452-62, but now instead of a large copper cone head, we've got a large gold cone head. Um, and I swapped thread colors here. This is still 6.0 um, uni thread, but it's in white this time instead of that rusty brown color. Again, just gonna make that thread coating all the way up the hook shank, working my way back to the hook band. Now if I had to have two colors of fly in the fall for a willy bugger, I would have a lot of confidence just fishing this white and gold color woolly bugger and that rusty brown pumpkin spice colored woolly bugger. If I had to add another color or two, I would add a olive woolly bugger with copper flash and a copper body 
and I would probably add in just good old classic black. Um, I think I fish those more in the spring, the olive and black colors. There we go, we got about a hook shank in length for the tail. This marabou is kind of ratty, but it's, it's whatever. As soon as the fish teeth touch this, it's going to get all torn up anyways. So again, just doing a little pinch wrap there, wrapping back a couple times. Let's get this out of the way so I don't secure it in here when I'm working up through the tape of the body. So I'm going to go loose wraps here, working my way up. This helps build taper in the body. The last one had really, really short fibers. That was a really crappy marabou feather, but those are the best ones to use for the woolly bugger tails because it doesn't really wrap well. It doesn't palmer well, those really crappy feathers, but it looks just fine in a woolly bugger tail. All right, again, walk, walking my way back with a thread. One one hundredth, one one hundredth micro flash boo for the tail again. And I'm just taking three strands again for the tail, trimming it out, and doing exactly the same method of adhering this to the hook shank. Just that pinch on the top, wrap it back a couple of times, use my fingers to splay it on either side of the hook shank, and use those close to touching, slightly open spiral wraps backwards to where that tail starts. Whoops, where that tail starts. Now I'm gonna do it in proper order here and trim out the flashaboo. And next, we've got some medium gold colored copper wire. And I'm just gonna secure that in here. Three or four tight wraps, work it up a little bit and then work my way back. All right. Next here for dubbing on this one, instead of just one color, I'm doing kind of my own Senyo's dub. I just love that stuff, but they don't make it in this color exactly. So I'm doing Ice Dub Gold, some Ice Dub Pearl. I'm just gonna take mostly a big hunk of pearl like this, maybe even a little bit more. A little bit more. And then I'm gonna take this stuff goes a long ways and it's really messy to work with. So just about that much. And I'm gonna stack them on top of each other and just blend them up like this. And I'm doing this in my kitchen because I live in an apartment and this stuff is just getting everywhere, but it's really fishy, so I don't care. I'm just gonna finger dub this onto the thread and we'll build up a little bit of a taper and work our way towards the front of this hook. All right. That looks awesome. It's gonna look even better once we put the hackle through the body here. I'm trying to put a little bit of a taper in this body as I'm working my way up, I'm trying to build it up a little bit, and then I'm leaving enough of this dubbing that I can build up some bulk right before the cone head, just again, because we want to seat that cone in there pretty nicely. We don't want it to be wobbling around. All right, there we go. Awesome. All right, next thing we're gonna do here, I'm gonna take this hackle. This is from a bugger pack um, that I got at Caddis. It's kind of like Cree colored, but you could use a regular old grizzly saddle or grizzly hackle. Um, you can do whatever you want with this, but I really like the Cree kind of colorway because it looks like gold and white. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing as last time. I'm going to find it where it starts to get kind of webby. I'm going to split them apart like this. And I'm going to make sure this time, unlike last time, that the concave side is facing the hook bend. Okay. And I'm going to do that same figure eight wrap so that it, when I open spiral this backwards towards the hook bend, it does so perpendicular to the hook shank. I'm going to turn this away, just cut out the butt of that feather. And I'm going to go just a couple more nice tight securing wraps there on the butt of that one. All right, awesome. I'm gonna go a couple wraps up at the front here. 
and then work our way backwards. All right, I'm gonna capture this hackle there with a wire, and just like on the last fly, some nice open spiral counter ribbing turns with this copper wire. Getting up to the front here. We're gonna do pretty much the exact same order that we just did as well. I get up to here, I'm gonna spin up some dubbing at the front, I'm gonna put in some rubber legs, and then I'm gonna finish it with a uh, hackle as well. All right, I'm gonna twist this off, keeping tension on my thread here so I don't pull the, the wire out got tension on that thread the whole time because otherwise if you do that twist off with this medium density wire sometimes it'll just pull the entire wire out and then you are mad because you have to get all the way back down to where you started the dubbing and that sucks all right so here we go okie dokie gonna take some more of this i stub pearl just using this this time not the gold you can use more gold if you want to. I just like how it looks more with only the ice dub pearl. And again, it's a pretty small piece here. This little of this stuff goes a long way. And I'm gonna build up a little dubbing loop here. Take my balloon dubbing spinner, put it through the loop, and there we go. Spin this up. If you guys do a lot of like work with dubbing loops, these things are so incredible. They make your job of teasing out all the fibers much easier than if you're just using a uh, bodkin. All right, a few wraps in here. Nice, looking good. Great, and tie this off, and then the legs, the rubber legs we're using this time are kind of grizzly, clear, and smoke with a little bit of fleckled gold, flecked gold in there. Um, again, I'm going to take one of these crazy legs, I'm going to cut it in half. Um, one thing I didn't mention too is I've kind of been tying this when I'm fishing, when I'm tying these for myself, I've been tying it sometimes doing the dubbing loop first, sometimes the rubber legs second. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that on the last one. It really just kind of comes down to how it looks um, at the end, but I find uh, as well how it fishes, it, maybe the rubber legs stick out a little bit more if I tie in the dubbing loop first because that dubbing loop is going to create a little bit of a prop, kind of like how you would um, put into a steelhead fly. Um, I find that sticks the rubber legs out a little bit more. So maybe it adds a little bit of fishiness, a little bit more movement in the water, but um, I've been doing it both ways. I kind of like how the really, really thin ones like these, the micro crazy legs, they, uh, they look a little bit better when they're tied in after the dubbing loop. All right, next I'm gonna take a mallard flank here that I've prepped, I've stripped off all the under um, fluff, the stuff that's a little closer to the thick part of the stem, and I'm just attaching the the very, very end here, the very tip of the stem. This can be kind of tricky to attach properly once you've gotten down to the cone. You really want to make sure you're getting a few good securing wraps here. And it, contrary to the uh, India hen here, if you're doing mallard flank, it's a pretty thin, wispy, fibery feather rather than that, that really big India hen fibers. You know, looks a lot different here. You might need two feathers if you're doing this with mallard at the end. Oh, that looks pretty good to me. And I'm going to do a little bit more of this pearl dub at the front. Um, just 
because I'm gonna wrap back over this mallard just a hair. And I wanna make sure that this cone head is seated nicely over that fly. So I'm just again a little teeny pinch here. I'm gonna finger dub it on. I won't even use all this teeny little pinch that I've used. This is again just to seat that cone in there. I'm do the same thing I did last time. You know, 10, 12 wraps of super glue coated thread, and then a half hitch, and then we call it good. But this one is a fishy fly. So again, I really I did not like invent this fly. This is just one that I've been fishing a lot that I felt like be a fun one to share. All right, looking good, feeling good. Cut that out. And we've got this one, we've got orange and brown. We've tied a few other colors here. You can do it in, again, the other two I mentioned are for like my confidence colors here. We've got olive and copper here. That one is definitely a heater. And we've got murdered out black with a little bit of a gold front to that one, so. Tie them up, fish them, they'll catch fish. If they don't, it might be user error. I don't know, hope you enjoyed. You can get all the materials for these flies at the Caddis Fly Shop. Please stop in, ask us about them, order up. Cheers.